Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be telling you guys how to always have the sharpest videos possible with any camera. And basically, when it comes to focus, that's one of the only things you can't really fix in post. And that's why it's so important to make sure everything is very in focus and very sharp. And here are five tips you can easily implement in your filmmaking production to always get the sharpest video. Number one, this could be a little bit controversial, is the shallow depth of field. So when you have only like one subject in focus, right, I think it's a lot easier to make it look sharp just because everything looks blurry around it. So our human brain, we see this contrast between like not blurry and blurry, and we can just assume, oh, that thing is very sharp. But when everything's in focus, it's just, we tend to judge it a lot more harshly when it comes to sharpness. So I say, just turn up the f-stop on whatever device you use on iPhone, I think you might be able to do that with like Filmic Pro, like this app. In most cameras, you should just widen the aperture and it should get you this very nice sharp and then everything is blurry look. Another tip is to make sure you can see what you're filming as clear as possible. Because obviously if your vision is blurry where you can't really see your monitor, it's harder to tell what you're filming is in focus or if it's, you know, not as sharp. Basically, if you have bad eyesight, I think you can adjust on the viewfinder of the cameras. And if you can't, make sure you wear glasses or contacts to make sure you can always see the clear screen as clear as possible. Because I remember when I was trying to do film photography, the old little cameras didn't really have that dial to change it for your eyesight. And during that time, my eyes are not that good. And it was just so hard to make sure everything is in focus. Make sure you get up to date contacts or glasses if you have bad vision. And also if you're shooting out in the sun, I definitely recommend turning the brightness on the monitors as high as possible. Just so, I mean, it does drain your battery a little bit. So that's why I recommend getting more batteries. But it's super important to always have the best like sight of your screen. I mean, imagine you wanted to save battery and you can't really see your screen too well and then you end up getting horrible footage and you wasted all that time, right? So just turn up the brightness in your monitors if you can. And I think, I know all phones, you can just turn up the brightness and cameras most, you can do that as well. And you know, let's say you're all the way up in brightness and it's still really hard to see because the sun is just shining directly right there, right? You can just block it with your hands, you know, go like this, use like some kind of object, like a piece of paper or like a notebook. And you know, you can also get your friend to hold like a blanket next to you and just block the sun for you or just put his hand to block the sun for you, right? Like, like this. It's, it works, trust me, I've done it for all of my movies pretty much when we shoot outside and it's hard to basically see. That's what I have my like friends do. All right, another thing to do with getting the sharpest video is making sure the lighting is good. So if the lighting is not, you know, optimal and it's like really dark and the ISO is cranked all the way up, it's just really hard to make it sharp because you can't really see your subject too well. And you know, if it's nighttime, make sure Apertures all the way up have some like you know lights nearby But just make sure you can see your subject really well so you can dial the focus because sometimes if it's dark Autofocus might not work too well and if it's dark manual focus is hard to f focus for yourself because you can't really see the subject right so make sure you have the best kind of lighting possible. Another thing I would say does to do with gear, because gear obviously matters. Basically, zoom lenses and prime lenses. I want to talk about that real quick. So zoom lenses, you know, zoom in. Prime lenses don't zoom in. They have a fixed focal length. But basically, these prime lenses, the ones that don't zoom in, they have sharper video. And essentially, when you use those, the videos just turn up a little bit sharper. I mean, it's really unnoticed. It's hard to notice, but it's noticeable and it's slightly sharper than zoom lenses. So if you have money, I definitely recommend going for uh, a better lens than you know a body, and I would recommend a prime lens. Maybe not when you're just starting out, but I would definitely recommend a prime lens. Because I got this prime lens for my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K, and it's like the, it's like the Lumix Leica 15 millimeter f1.7 prime lens, and it's honestly one of the greatest investments ever. Like the footage is so nice, and this lens is such a beast, despite its size. Another thing that makes your video seem sharper is basically this contrast, right? When you have high contrast, it's a lot easier to tell the thing is, you know, in focus and sharper. And that's why I definitely recommend if you're, you know, editing, boost your contrast. If it's like at a one, maybe go to a 1.2 or a 1.25, that's, that's pretty much what I do for my color grades. Um, I think it depends on the camera, but I definitely recommend cranking up the contrast just a little bit because it does make it seem 
just a little bit sharper than it you know is the one thing to keep in mind is your video does not have to be the sharpest possible i mean if you want these are the tips that you use but i think when it comes to art it's all about like being creative and doing what you want to convey to the audience you know is sh having a sh the sharpest video going to convey your message to the audience better or is it, you know, a not so sharp video gonna convey it better to the audience? So maybe just, you know, think of what your, you know, message is and what emotions that are behind your story before you decide to implement all these tips and make your video as sharp as possible. Obviously, I think if you shoot a commercial or travel films, it'd be nice to make it like really sharp and clean, get that commercial look. But if you're shooting like film, you know, especially like art house cinema, I don't think you really need to be the sharpest as possible. I think adding a little bit of blur when you're editing, which I do that, a video on that coming soon, but adding a little bit of blur to your video and then adding some grainy effects makes it have this really nice like film look to it. And it's just up to whoever makes the art. So just take all the tips into consideration, but you know, figure out, do you want it the sharpest or do you want to have it more artistic and not have it super sharp? Another thing I want to talk about is, you know, when it comes to gear, I think gear definitely matters. And I'm just gonna recommend some cameras and a few like budget levels. So definitely watch some other videos on it, but these are just my opinions on what I think is the best cameras for a few budget levels. So obviously the zero budget is your phone. Use your phone. I know you've heard this a million times if you're like watching film videos on YouTube, but everyone says that and it's true. I started off making a lot of movies with my phone. In fact, the first movie I've ever made about this hamster that's haunted was shot on my mom's iPhone 6. So just use your phone go create content and you're eventually gonna be, get better and you're gonna get better and better gear. So don't worry about gear like when you have a phone, you know? So I'd say that's like the zero budget range. And I know if you're watching this video, you probably have a device. I might make a video in the future about, you know, mobile filmmaking, like having, using how to use a phone to make a short film and how to make it better. And I have a lot of tips on that actually. But anyways, for the, let's say a thousand to 5,000 range, it's probably the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras. They're honestly some of the best cameras you can buy with your money. It doesn't have autofocus, but I think, you know, if you're making a short film, that probably doesn't matter too much. And it's just for like $1,200, you can get like one of those, some of the greatest quality videos ever. And if you want autofocus, maybe go with the Sony a7 IV, a7 III. Those are also really great cameras. I'm actually shooting on the a7 IV right now. And I'm gonna be doing like some comparison videos in the future too. Cause you know, if you guys don't know, I just started making a lot of filmmaking videos. So that's fun. Okay, if you have more money than 5,000, honestly, I would recommend you rent a Area Alexa. Those cameras are absolutely crazy. Uh, the sensor sizes are huge. That's basically what they use to shoot Hollywood level movies, right? Like, you know, Knives Out, Joker, all those movies are shot with like the area like uh, and you can get the mini, mini LF, and you can, I think you can rent those. It depends on where you live. Maybe if you live in California, you can let, rent those for like $600 for two days. And I think that's probably gonna be really worth it. If you're only like shooting a, you know, short film for the weekend, right? And you want to, you know, a Hollywood level production look. That's what I recommend. But you know, none of these tips really matter if you don't know how to shoot a video. If your cinematography is not good, well, it doesn't really matter how sharp your video is. I think the sharpness of video is only part of the whole video look. You gotta get the best lighting, the best composition, the best framing. And that's why I recommend you guys check out this video on how to be a better cinematographer and how to get more cinematic footage. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.